Once again, Las Vegas is the site for the Mountain West Conference Tournament. And coming up next, quarterfinal number three, as the second seed Utah State takes down the hometown Rebels. Vegas, you are watching Bracket Week, presented by Kubota. Already two Mountain West Conference quarterfinals in the books. We're getting set for two more tonight on CBS Sports Network. A look at the updated bracket already advancing. San Diego State and Nevada, they'll meet in one semi tomorrow. We've got Utah State and UNLV coming up right now. And hi, everyone. Courtside with former Villanova head coach Steve Lapis. I'm Andrew Catalan, Utah State, the two seed for the Mountain West Conference Tournament. Depending upon where you look, they're in, they're out, they're on the bubble. They got to win this one tonight. Well, if they lose this one, it'd be a bad loss, obviously. So they have to win this game. And these two teams split during the regular season. For some reason, UNLV, a tough matchup, especially the guards for Utah State. This should be a good one. We know where the Aggies want to go. They want to feed the big guy, Namiyash Keita. Had an incredible season once again for Utah State. Well, the defensive player of the year in the conference, averaging three blocks a game. He's one of the best defenders in the entire nation. He's on the Naismith of Player of the Year watch list. This guy, one of 10 finalists. He's had an outstanding year. And then you have UNLV on the other hand. These two guys, David Jenkins, tremendous three-point shooter, one of the best in the Mountain West, and Bryce Hamilton, one of the best one-on-one -on -one players in the league. These two guys have to have big games tonight if the Rebels are going to get this one. No fans, so they won't have a home crowd advantage, but they're playing on their home floor, coming off a win yesterday over Air Force. Tip-off next on CBS Sports Network. Tied at 56, Merrill for the lead. He's got it! Oh, my goodness. What a shot. There's Malachi Flynn at midcourt. The heave, and oh. he almost hit it! And the Aggies go back to back here in Vegas. We were here a year ago as Craig Smith and the Aggies won their second straight Mountain West Tournament Championship. They're going to make it three in a row, at least try to do that starting right now against UNLV as we take a look at the starting lineups. And Brock Miller will get the start. He did not play the last two for the Aggies, nursing a bad back. He's going to give it a go tonight. Of course, for UNLV, keep an eye on Bryce Hamilton, third in the conference, averaging 18 points per game. For T.J. Otzelberger in his second season at UNLV, and they're coming off a big win yesterday in the opening round. They pounded Air Force 80-52. to They were up 18 at the half. And Steve, sometimes it's it's good to get that first one out of the way. You roll in with a little momentum here against the two seed. Yeah, I mean, they've got to be feeling pretty good right now about having been in the tournament, whereas Utah State starting out fresh. And as we talked about in the open, they played two tough games, UNLV and Utah State, during the season. They met here in Vegas in late January. UNLV won the first one by three, and then two, two days later, Utah State got some payback. It's the first time they've met at the Mountain West Tournament. And we are set to go. And one of the things to keep an eye on, Andrew, is that Nami Keita didn't play well in either one of those games from an offensive standpoint. Mbake Jong can be a tough matchup for him because he's big, strong, and physical. Our officials tonight, Eric Curry, Deron White, Ryan McDaniel, and UNLV in the red uniforms as the ball first. And Utah State is a 99.5% man-to-man team. That's what you will see from them. More of a packed-in defense. Heels on the three-point line. Try to deny dribble penetration. Here's Mbake Chong down low, tied up, gets it off. No good. Rebound comes to Hamilton, and he scores. 
Well, one thing about Hamilton, he's averaged 18 points a game, second team all Mountain West this year. This guy can really score. Not a great three-point shooter, but he can put the ball on the floor. Kata's first touch, his shot off the mark, and the rebound to Caleb Grill. And that was a very tough shot, giving Bakke Jong a lot of credit for the way he played defensively on Kata that time. Hamilton trying to get around Marco Anthony. Hamilton's second shot, and the rebound to Raleigh Worcester. Wooster finds an opening and knocks it down. Raleigh Wooster in the second game that Utah State won almost had himself a triple-double. He had 19 points, 9 assists, 9 rebounds in that game. This kid gives UNLV fits. Great an cut. opening and Hamilton finishes. Great screen on the baseline, a good pass. And that's where Hamilton does his damage. More inside than out, 30% three-point shooter. Kata right to the hoop, and he draws the foul. I mean, you're going to take a look. Good pass and not good defense that time. And Marco Anthony is their best def perimeter defender. And then a little bit of a miscommunication on that exchange gives Kata a little bit of a head of esteem going to the basket. Good foul by Jong. Third season for Craig Smith. What a job he has done at Utah State. He's 10 and 1 in the month of March with the Aggies. Grill defended by Miller. Travel by David Jenkins. Really good defense that time, and Kata came out to hedge that screen on top, and he came out really hard on that. You're not getting off a jump shot if he's hedging screens really hard. Last time Utah State was on the floor was Saturday at Fresno State. They were down 10 at the half. They only had 17 points at halftime. Came back to win 57-51, so the offense was out of sync against the Bulldogs. See if they get off to a good start here tonight. Well, one thing about Utah State, Andrew, they're a much better defensive team than offensive team. That's who they are, and they're one of the best rebounding teams in the country. Second in rebound margin, out-rebounding their opponents by over 10 a game. UNLV kind of small, except for John. They're going to have to rebound in this game. Hamilton around the screen, drives in, and with the left hand, he gets it to drop. That's a big time move, because you know who was on him was the defensive player of the year, Kata. He switched to that, and that was a terrific finish. Six early points for Bryce Hamilton. Kata, out to Wooster. He drives in with the left hand lay-in. Wooster missed three games in February with a lower leg injury, but played the last couple to close out the regular season. You know, one thing we got to keep an eye on, Andrew, that time Kata slow getting to that role. Great play by John. Yeah. One of the things we got to keep an eye on, Andrew, is the fact that Utah State, in both games they played UNLV during the year, destroyed them in the paint, even in the loss. Destroyed him in the paint. Ever, ever. And Bakke Chong saves it to Caleb Grill. Jenkins the other way. Jenkins lost it out of bounds to the Aggies. Great play there by Bakke Chong to keep it alive. Substitutions for UNLV as. Nick Blake, the talented freshman, checks in along with Moses Wood. We talked with Craig Smith earlier today, the Utah State head coach, and he said Moses Wood had a couple of good games against us. We have to make sure that he doesn't go off the sophomore out of Reno. One thing about UNLV, they do have a bunch of guys that you have to guard on the perimeter, and Wood's one of them. Kata gets his own miss back up and missed it again. A couple of point blank misses by Kata. 
Jenkins. His shot's blocked by Kata. Kata with his 76th block of the year. That's fourth most in the country. Anthony, other way, counted and won. Really nice finish by the Virginia transfer. Marco Anthony will have a chance for a three-point play when we come back. Good start to this one. Mountain West quarterfinal number three. UNLV and Utah State playing for a spot in the semis. College basketball on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Kubota. Together we do more. By Werner, the official ladder of NCAA March Madness. And by AT&T 5G. Fast, reliable, secure. It was a chilly day. Vegas wise for March early on here UNLV leads Utah State 8 7. So we take a look at the Aggies tournament resume and we said it right off the top they're on the bubble. I mean they're net 49 two quad one victories. This would be a, a real rough loss to add to their resume if they don't get it Steve. Uh, there's no doubt and I, I think the big thing that's hurting them is they have two quad three losses UNLV being one of them and South Dakota State being the other one and when you have two quad three losses and only those two quad one wins, they kind of offset each other. But this obviously would be a bad loss at this time of year. So it's not the loss, it's the fact that they lose to a team that is, doesn't have a high ranking in the net. That's not a tournament team. That's what we're kidding. And Craig, Craig Smith told us earlier today, at our level, it feels like every game is a playoff game. Pressure is a privilege, though, and we know we got to go out and get the job done. They were getting the job done the last couple of years here in Vegas, back to back. Mountain West Tournament champions looking to make it a three-peat as Kata travels. And you know, Delcadia is much smaller than him, and he just was smart. He didn't allow Kata to back him down, back him down, and then Kata just traveled. And a foul. Called on Alfonso Anderson. Anderson, the Mountain West sixth man of the year. He had started the last four games, but now with Brock Miller returning from a back injury, Anderson coming off the bench again tonight. Wood driving on Anderson. Wood locates Delcadia, puts up a shot, and he is fouled. I think UNLV is playing with great patience in the half court right now. They're moving the ball from side to side, which is what you have to do when you have a defender like Kata in the middle. You got to move him around a little bit. You can't let him stay put in one place protecting the basket. So here is Eduardo Delcadia from Italy, and he makes the first free throw. Paramount Plus is here. Live sports, breaking news, and a mountain of entertainment. Paramount Plus, try it free. First year at UNLV for Del Cadia. Played last year at the College of Central Florida. Oh, great defense by Hamilton for the steal. Seventh in the league this year in steals per game, averaging 1.3. Hamilton all the way, and the tip, but no, Wood with interference. That ball wasn't going in, so yeah. it's not like Wood took away a basket. That ball was coming out. I'll tell you, this guy can shake and bake with the best of them. Good call. Wood knew it right away. The sophomore from Reno. Anthony left alone. And the long rebound to Hamilton. You know, one thing about this Utah State team, really, except for Ashworth and Brock Miller, they're not a good three-point shooting team. UNLV, on the other hand, has made 10 threes nine times this year. That's a big part of their offense, but they're not even using it so far. 
Rebels had nine threes in the win over Air Force yesterday. They shot 52% from deep. And they made 13 in that win against Utah State. So that's the book on UNLV. They want to shoot threes. Kata draws the foul. You know, right now, UNLV has started this game really by scoring in the lane all the time. Normally a three-point shooting team, but that really bodes well for them. They've only taken one three and have a, a two-point lead, 10 to eight. It's early, obviously, but that's a good sign for them because you got to think they're going to start making threes. Bean with a tough two. Meanwhile, that previous foul was on Nick Blake. That was the second on the UNLV freshman. I'll tell you, Wooster's been all over Jacobs. Hamilton feeling it here in the first half, but that three comes up short. Offensive rebound, UNLV, and Grill quickly fires and misses another. Well, that was a great look for Grill, who's a really good three-point shooter, makes over two a game. There's the double came quick that time. Kata gets away, Wooster for three, yes! You know, you take a chance. The double Kata, they're not a great three-point shooting team. Wooster's numbers really from shooting from the three-point line aren't good, 27, 28% for the season, but he made them pay that time. Hamilton, nice moves, and he draws the foul on Max Schulga. You know, they brought the quick double. Kata did a great job. One thing about Kata, when you're a seven-footer and you're second on the team in assists, that tells you something. He dribbled out, he back dribbled out of that double team and was able to find Worcester and hit him on the numbers. That was a heck of a play by Kata. He's the only player in the nation with at least 65 blocks and 65 assists. Yeah, you don't see seven-footers that comfortable handling the ball. Tough two inside for the freshman, Devin Tillis. Booster thought about another three, and now we'll try. And before the shot, there's a foul committed by UNLV. It's going to go on Tillis. That's his first. Ashworth, a lot of contact over the basket and out of bounds. And that takes us to a timeout. 11.57 to go, first half. And Utah State leads by one. You are watching Bracket Week presented by Kubota Mountain West Tournament quarterfinals. The seven seed UNLV against number two Utah State and Namiyash Keita. Yeah, this guy here, you double him and he's able to throw the ball out of the post no problem. So if you make a decision to double him, that's fine. But you got to definitely run out of those double teams quickly because these guys can't make you pay that, though that's not their strength. Now here comes that pressure again. No field goals yet for Keita, who's had a double-double in six consecutive games entering tonight. Tillis bounces one to Mbake Jong. He draws the double, knocked away. Good defense by Dorius. And you know, Jong is a good player. He doesn't have the greatest hands, and that time he fumbled the ball that should have been really a dunk. Dorius travels. Dorius, one of three seven-footers on this Utah State team. They have an average height of 79.3 inches. They are the tallest team in the nation. I only had one in my entire career, <laughs> 17 years. We're lucky we can see over the monitor to the court. <laughs> Oh, 
Chong couldn't finish at the rim and numbers the other way for the Aggies. Anthony had it ripped away, but a foul, and it's called on Anthony. Bryce Hamilton again with a good defensive play for the Reds. Yeah, Bryce Hamilton has got a good bounce in his step tonight. Mbake Chong back to the bench. No fans here in Las Vegas for the Mountain West Conference Tournament this year as Jenkins is fouled shooting the three. That was a terrible foul because really he was not going to take a good shot that time. He comes hard off that handoff. That's just, that's just not a good play defensively. Fouls on the freshman Wooster. Yeah, you have to let a guy, you have to give him an area to come down. He went straight up that time. Jenkins, you have to allow him to come straight down. Jenkins had the big game against Utah State in the second meeting between these two schools. He went for a career-high 33 points, including five threes. And as Craig Smith told us earlier today, we got to make sure that Jenkins doesn't heat up. He can heat up so quickly. We got to make sure that doesn't happen tonight. And he, he hunts for three-point shots. I mean, this guy is one of the best in the league. So, I mean, he's second in three-point percentage and third in threes per game, almost three threes a game. So they got to get to him quick, just don't want to foul him. Jenkins gets it done at the line, and UNLV leads by two. <laughs> Approaching the midway point of the first half. Anderson launches a three and hits. Alfonso Anderson from the outside. And Utah State did a great job there. Both these teams, I love what they're doing in the half-court offense. Moving the ball side to side, playing with great patience. That's a bad turnover. Delcadia turns it over. Wooster the other way. Knocked away by Grill. And now UNLV hustling in transition. Tillis has an opening and hits. Neither one of these teams likes to play fast. That was taking advantage of that turnover there to get something easy quick. Kata calling for it. Draws the double. Back out Anderson for another three. Not this time, way off. Offensive rebound, Anthony. Brock Miller. His three comes up short. Hamilton tracks down the loose ball. I don't know. I think Miller's hurting too, Andrew. He yeah. has not really been involved in this game at all. And Craig Smith told us the dilemma with Brock Miller and the back injury is if he takes him out of the game for a while, how quickly does the back tighten up? He wants to try to keep him out there yeah. and keep it loose. A, a bad back, if you go sit down, it's it's it could be tough. Hamilton. And Kata rips it off the glass. Tough pass. Anthony able to handle it. Anthony missed it. And he hung on the rim after. That's a technical on Marco Anthony. You know, you're allowed to protect yourself. I, I just want to see this again. I mean, there was a guy underneath him. I, I don't know. I don't think that's a good call. I think he had a, a right. Oh, you know what he did wrong was he hung, hung on with the one hand yeah. and went for the ball. That's the technical foul. It's not even so much the hand. If he hung and somebody was under him, you're allowed to do that. But the fact that he hung with one hand and then tipped the ball with the other, that's where the technical comes in. Go ahead, shoot him. So Jenkins will shoot for UNLV. <laughs> Greg Smith told us that, thinking back to last year, the number two seed 
for the Mountain West Conference Tournament, so they did not play in the first round. He said his guys were a little sluggish to start the quarterfinals last year, and it seems like UNLV has got a little bit more energy out of the gate here tonight. I, I don't think there's any question, and you know, like I said, I like what UNLV is doing. That's why Utah State bringing a little bit of this pressure. But I like what UNLV has done in the half court offensively. They're being really patient. Jenkins uses the glass. You know, this UNLV team, Andrew, was picked fourth in the preseason. Now, they're playing without a, one of their most, the most important guy they lost, Marvin Coleman. He was their point guard. They really now are playing without any kind of point guard. Marvin Coleman only played six games this year out with a stress fracture the whole season. Utah State again comes up empty. Matter of fact, we were here last year, Andrew. We had a triple double. Yeah, remember that? How about that? Only six games. Too bad for Coleman. Not only a leader on the court, but off the floor for TJ Otzelberger yeah. as well. I mean, Bryce Hamilton has had to play a lot of point guard. That that really hurts a guy who scores. Miller again trying to heat up and misses, but Anthony is there for the offensive board. Wooster, deep two, air ball, and a timeout with 7.33 to go. UNLV's got some energy here tonight in the quarters. Yeah, UNLV definitely bringing it tonight. I like what they're doing on both ends of the floor. They're here to play. Rebels up three. UNLV up by three. This year's teams in the tournament are now using the Shot Tracker app on an iPad Pro during games for real time analytics like shot charts and points per possession to help optimize their lineups and play calling. And you love this lap. Love it. I used to tell my guys we would have possessions during a game where I thought things were getting crazy. We're throwing five passes on this next possession. Every, every game we played, I had my assistants count how many passes we throw on each possession. And invariably, we scored more points the more passes we made on those possessions. It's unbelievable. You move the defense around. You know, you're not passing the ball to one side. If you're passing the ball side to side to side, you're moving the defense around, you're gonna get a good shot. Nick Blake on the floor for UNLV playing with two fouls. And you know, they have to put him in because he's probably the most closest thing they have to a point guard. Fouls on Shulga, the freshman from Ukraine. And now Blake will come out and Jenkins quickly back in. And you know, Utah, is Utah State is playing with a lot of pressure on him tonight. These kids know how important this game is. UNLV really nothing to lose in this one. Yeah, we had a good discussion with Craig Smith. I mean, you can't really hide what's going on with the NCAA tournament anymore with phones and TV and everything. I mean, these, these guys know where they stand. They see it everywhere they look. Bracketologists everywhere. Everybody talking about who's in, who's out. They know where they stand. Keita and Abake Chong were battling for position in the post. That's going to be a good matchup to follow here. Keita's got it. And he is fouled as he passed it. And for Mbake Chong, that's his second. Yeah, he's going to have to come out and probably stay out now. Now, this was according to Jerry Palm at the beginning of the day, but obviously a lot has changed with Boise State losing earlier today to Nevada. And I would, I would think, Steve, that puts Boise State in a lot of trouble. Yeah, I would have to say that Boise State is probably out. Now, you never know what's going to happen, but my guess is they're out. Jenkins three won't go. Anthony had it, lost it, and now has it again. Anderson has the size advantage over Grill. Anderson around Grill doesn't get the roll. And the rebound to Moses Wood. 
That's the other thing. I mean, UNLV has done a pretty good job on the glass against one of the best rebounding teams in the country. They're actually out-rebounding Utah State right now. This team averages over 40 rebounds a game. Utah State scoreless over the last four minutes, and they're shooting just 30% for the game. Hamilton, nice move. move, and it goes. He's got all that kind of stuff. Eight points in the first half for Bryce Hamilton, and the drought continues for the Aggies, approaching five minutes now. I mean, no second chance points, Andrew. Hamilton, steal, and he missed that one. Anthony runs the other way. Utah State averages 13 offensive rebounds a game. Number one in the league, and they have no second chance points. Oh, that's charged. That's offensive foul. It's a good yep. call. Hamilton pushed off, good and call. he gets called. <laughs> yeah, you saw this one coming. He sticks that right out right there. That's an easy one. I saw one of the referees, Eric Curry, clapped because he knew that was a, that the other referee made the call. He knew clapped it. For. <laughs> Rebels have scored the last six points. They lead it by five with five minutes to go in the first half. Kata position stripped away by Jenkins. Great help coming from the weak side by Jenkins. Oh, great feed, Jenkins to Alcadia, but a tough shot. Ashworth locates Wooster. Wooster, floater, no, the follow by Anthony, flying in for two. Anthony's been tough getting his hand on a lot of these balls on the offensive glass. He's been the most active player for the Aggies here in the first half. He's got five points and six rebounds. Boy, they've reversed the ball every single possession. Hamilton travels. Seven turnovers here in the first half by UNLV. Utah State already with eight. And neither, neither one of these teams really turns it over a lot. UNLV calls timeout with 4.02 to go in the opening half. Good start for the Rebels, trying to get to the Mountain West semis for the first time since 2014. Back in Vegas, coming up, AT&T 5G at the half. Adam Zucker, Wally Zerbiak, Chris Walker, Gary Parrish, and Jerry Palm in studio. Highlights, stats, and analysis all coming up. And it's been quite a day. What a day this was in college basketball. Duke's season ends because of a positive COVID test of one of their players. Virginia at the buzzer over Syracuse. Villanova knocked out by Georgetown, and West Virginia loses a heartbreaker. What a wild day, Steve. Well, I'll tell you what. There's a lot of bubble teams that I don't want to say you're happy about. You don't want anybody to test positive. But there's bubble teams that are breathing a sigh of relief that Duke is gone. Uh, no doubt about it. And now in the Big East, you're going to have Georgetown or Seton Hall in the championship game. So a lot of bubble teams worried about that one, that one of those two could win the Big East tournament. Boise State losing here in Vegas earlier today against Nevada. It's another one that will greatly affect the bubble. Inside, Dorius. Utah State still struggling shooting the ball tonight. I mean, I'm surprised Kate has been out so much. Well, he's 0 for 4, and he's got two turnovers tonight. No fouls, a uh, one foul rather for Kato. Yeah, I mean, you know, I get it if he had two fouls, but I mean, he's just much better than the alternatives. Even when he's not playing good, he'll make passes, he'll do other things. Miller was calling for it. Anthony looks the other way with three minutes to go. 
Davis from the wing. And Bean knocked it out. Yeah, Kata has one point, Bean has two points, so. Here's guys that in the last six, Kata's had a double-double, Bean's had a double-double in four straight, and they have not gotten going tonight. You know, I think one of the potential problems for Utah State is, you know, Bean's a good player, Kata obviously is really good. When they play together, there's no space because Bean is not a three-point, he's not one of those four men that can step out and make threes. Kata doesn't shoot from the perimeter, so the, the middle is really clogged up right now, I think, for Utah State. Brill. Into the corner it goes. They work it around to Hamilton for an open three. And Kata back on the floor with the rebound. Five boards in the first half for Kata. You know, if this lineup isn't destroying you on the offensive glass, then it's not a great lineup. Bean tried to feed Kata, could not make the catch. The transition defense by uh, Utah State's been very good. Wood, yes, from the outside, Moses Wood for three. This kid averaged four or five points a game at Tulane. It's not like he wasn't a player. He was a player at Tulane. Redshirted last year with UNLV. And a whistle inside. Delcadio is trying to defend Kata. I mean, a great drive and kick. Boy, he was just all alone, and that's a guy who's they know can shoot the ball. Craig Smith mentioned him to us today as a guy who can really shoot the ball for UNLV. Seventh team foul against UNLV, so it's a one and one for Kata. T.J. Otzelberger and Craig Smith have a history as Otzelberger, former coach at South Dakota State, and Craig Smith was at South Dakota for four years. Jenkins, ah, Wooster alters the shot. Jenkins is taking some tough shots in this game. One twenty-five to go, first half. I mean, Brock Miller is like he's not out there. He hasn't been. He's taking one shot. Kata turnaround, pretty stuff, and that's his first field goal of the night. That's a big time play. And something on the floor, so they stop play. I mean, you got to give Eduardo credit. Delcadia, you know, he made him shoot a fadeaway jumper, but it was a pretty nice one. You just got to keep Kata from going to the basket. If you can keep him doing things like that, you did your job. Look how this UNLV team is passing the ball side to side. The ball reversals have been terrific in the half court. Hamilton spins and no good off the glass. Wooster, great move. Riley Wooster's had a nice first half. Yeah, he's been their best player in the first half. He's four of five for nine points, and it's six in a row for the Aggies to tie it at 24. They got to run this down as far as they can. So Utah State in their last game had 17 at the half, only 24 late first half here tonight. Six second difference between the game clock and the shot clock. Jenkins will launch from deep. It won't go. Shot clock turned off. Anthony over to Miller. Miller at the horn. No good. And that is how the first half ends. UNLV controlled tempo for a good portion of that first half, but Utah State with six points late to tie it at 24. Coming up after the break, we'll send you back to our New York studio for AT&T 5G at the half.
You're watching Bracket Week, presented by Kubota. Back in Las Vegas with our first half stats and points off turnovers, a big key for UNLV in the first half. We are tied at 24. Back courtside with Steve Lapis, I'm Andrew Catalan. We talked about the importance of this game for Utah State in regards to the NCAA tournament bubble. They got to wake up here in the second half. Well, part of it is UNLV is putting them to sleep by really maintaining possession of the ball in the half court. The way they've moved the ball has allowed them to get some pretty good opportunities in the half court. So you got to give UNLV all kinds of credit for what they've been able to do with their half court offense. Here's an example right here where they move the ball from one side to the other, and this allows that dribble penetration in there, and then a kick where Namiya Keita is kind of stuck in no man's land, and he loses Wood, and Wood's out in the corner by himself and is able to knock out the three-point shot. So ball reversals have been a big key for UNLV in this game. We're seeing high tech and basketball knowledge come <laughs> together like never before with the Shot Tracker iPad app, what would have taken Coaching staff's hours to crunch is now at their fingertips, available live during the game. And we go back to this one because you like it so much. And the way that UNLV is moving the ball has certainly been a big part of their success to this point. When they've thrown six-plus passes, they have scored the most points. That tells you something. Winner advances to tomorrow's semifinals against the winner of our game still to come tonight on CBS Sports Network between Colorado State and Fresno State. And I think right now Utah State has going to have to establish Namiya Keita in the lane offensively a little bit more. Miller very quiet to this point. Knocks down the jumper. And that's the first field goal of the night for Brock Miller. Well, that was a great start by him because he really was not involved in this game. He had missed his first four shot attempts until hitting that two. Grill will launch from the outside. Wow. Caleb Grill from deep. Tough shot. UNLV two for ten from beyond the arc tonight after that three by Grill and the answer from Marco Anthony. They will look at that during the next stoppage, but for now they call it a three. Hamilton had a big first half for the Rebels. But a bad pass there, and Wooster is able to deflect it. Yeah, Wooster in the passing lane there. And Anthony makes him pay. They need a timeout. And UNLV calls timeout as Craig Smith charges on the court, all fired up as the Aggies have risen here in the second half. A sleepy start, but they've come out with a lot of energy and emotion here in the second. back with the next greatest generation is now presented by Army National Guard. We take a look at Alfonso Anderson, who's a communication major at Utah State, senior from Tacoma, Washington, member of the NABC Honors Court Mountain West all academic team a year ago. During that timeout, the Marco Anthony shot was confirmed as a three pointer. Anthony is the first player on either team tonight to get into double figures. He's got 10 points to go along with six rebounds. Going back to the first half, Utah State is on a 13 to 3 run, and they've taken a four point advantage. Tillis through traffic out to Jenkins. Extra pass, Hamilton hits the three. That was great movement of the ball once again by UNLV. Hamilton into double figures. He's got 11 points. The double coming quickly, not even on the bounce. Coming right away on Kato. Anthony, he's feeling it tonight. 
I mean, he's been a good, solid three-point shooter all year, but he's only made 18 on the season, so it's not like he's a guy who shoots a lot of them. And only three threes in his last seven games. He's got two this evening and 13 for Anthony. Nice cut, grill, can't finish. Anthony on the baseline. Oh, what a feed to Bean. This is a different Utah State team compared to the first half. Energy, it's all there right now for the Aggies. And a foul called on Wooster. Well, you take a look right here. You're going to see the stop it right there. The drill penetration to the baseline causes the help. Nobody rotates in front of Bean, and that's why Bean's able to be all alone and make that layup. Got to help the helper. Grill. Wow. Sizzling from the outside. Back to back threes for Grill. I mean, that's a tough shot. Three point Utah State advantage. Miller. He'll shoot the three and knock it down. Rock Miller with the triple. Both these teams know how to play offense in the half court. That time, Utah State moving the ball side to side themselves, ending up with a good shot by Brock Miller. Blake thought about a three. Now Blake driving on Wooster. Freshman on freshman, and Kata says, get out of here. Third block tonight for Kata, and the Aggies have some life here in Vegas. Yeah, they came out with this energy, and Brock Miller knocking out a couple of them makes a big difference. Aggies up six. Here we go. Big fella jamming in there. Yes, March Madness is upon us. The selection show a couple days away on Sunday, 6 Eastern on CBS. First four is a week from tonight, right through the national championship game Monday, April 5th on CBS. Now, this was at the beginning of the day, according to Jerry Palm. Last four in, first four out, but Steve, a lot has changed since the beginning of the day. Yeah, there's no doubt. I mean, Boise State here, I think, took a big hit losing to Nevada. Nevada was 98 in the net. So that is going to be considered a bad loss for Boise State. So I don't think it bodes well for them. Now you never know what's going to happen, how things are going to fall. But right now I'd have to say Boise State on the outside looking in. Utah State hoping to move up according to Jerry Palm. Now other people have Utah State in and they feel pretty good about their position, but at the same time, you never want to take anything for granted this time of year. There's no doubt about that. They got to take care of business here with the UNLV team that's up for a fight tonight. But they turn it over here, Blake being the other way. Ashworth's shot is blocked. It was Blake who got a hand on it. Jenkins all the way around Bean and won't go. Boy, Jenkins has really struggled tonight. He's one for nine tonight. Anthony, good defense out of bounds to Utah State. Last time these two teams met, Jenkins had 33 points and five threes. Not the case tonight. Only five points on one for nine. Wow. And now Jenkins has come out of the game. Bean catch and shoot. Yes. Nice out of bounds play. UNLV fell asleep a little bit on that one. 
Now a 23-9 run for Utah State, dating back to late first half action. Yeah, they, I don't know what Craig Smith told them in the locker room, but. Now Katia counted in one. Makes a good move behind his back. Cater reaching for the ball, falls down. Right there, that reach. Could have been a foul, really, on Cater there. Foul was called on Bean to give Delcadia a chance at a three-point play. Cater the rebound. Number nine for the big guy. The lob, Kata over Grill. Oh, he turned off the grill on that one. Woo, Kata going up. You saw that one coming from here. Grill to a cutting Del Cotti, who's fouled far by Bean. Let's go back to the dunk. Well, take a look. It's a really good screen on the weak side. This is a set play. You're going to see right here. Okay, we're just running from there. He's going to reverse the ball. Now, right there, Anthony sets. Well, he doesn't even set the screen. He just goes right up to the rim when it gets reversed to the other side. Bean is going to get a breather as Alfonso Anderson returns. And Bryce Hamilton going over to chat with TJ Otzelberger. The UNLV has gotten out of that rhythm they found in the first 10 minutes of this game. They got to try to get that back. And the thing they really got to get back in is they got to start playing a little better defense yep. in the half court. They, they really, the defense was great in the first half. Now they've lost these guys a couple of times. Jenkins is back on the floor. They need to get him going as well. Miller, quick three. It's good. And that's a tough shot. Second three this half for Brock Miller. And in this half, Utah State is four of five from deep. Delcadia. No, Kata tips it out right to Miller. Miller wants it back. He's starting to feel it. This team that's out there now for Utah State, a little more space because Anderson is the four man. He can make three. Out of bounds, last touch by the Rebels. DJ Otzelberger with three new players on the floor. 13.46 to play. Miller is just hunting for shots right now. He's starting to get in that groove. Ashworth is left alone. Oh. Anthony offensive rebound, and he pulls it out. He's been really tough on the glass. Seven boards for Anthony, three on the offensive end. Kata around Jong, and a foul is called. And everyone on that Utah State bench is up and cheering, and you're right, Craig Smith must have had some choice words at halftime. Yeah, I don't know what he said, but the energy in the second half has been much, much better. That's the third foul called on Mbake Jong. Kato is inching closer to a seventh straight double double. Seven points, nine boards. Jersey Mike's is the proud title sponsor of the Naismith Player of the Year Award. Join us when we announce the winner on April 3rd, right here on CBS Sports Network. One out of two for Kato. And this is the largest lead of the night for Utah State. It's up to 10. Yeah, though UNLV has moved the ball in the second half, they just have not. That's good defense again. Much better help, much better energy by Utah State. Turnover by Jenkins. 10 on the night for the Rebels. Anderson. 
Good box out by Bryce Hamilton. Elkadia left open, and he connects. Elkadia has had a nice game. He has a very nice game. He plays very hard. He's really helping. He averages two and a half points per night. He's got eight here this evening. No double. Forget it. Yep. I mean, he's just too big and too good for Delcadia, who's 6'7". Seven. He's 7 feet and long. 10 points, 9 boards for Keita. Jenkins quick, shooting 3, no good. His struggles continue. Wooster. Oh, that's got to be a foul. Wow. And a foul is called on Devin Tillis as Cato went sprawling to the ground. Yeah, I mean, that's... And Cato a little shaken off as he will head to the bench. Anderson right at Moses Wood. Anderson can't finish the tip by Bean. No, until it secures the loose ball rebound. Ten point game inside 12 to go. Yeah, UNLV's got to find out where they want to score from here in the half court. Bryce Hamilton and Jenkins got to get it going. Moses Wood is fouled on the shot, and he'll shoot two when we come back. Well, it's not unusual to see Utah State feeling good here in Vegas. The back-to-back -back Mountain West Tournament champions. You're watching Bracket Week presented by Kubota. It's not unusual to see. CBS Sports Network brings you the 2021 Air Force Reserve CUSA Semis tomorrow. All starts at 12 Eastern from Frisco, Texas. Western Kentucky and UAB will meet at noon Eastern, and we're still awaiting the winners for the second semifinal at 3 Eastern time. Utah State, Steve, they look like a different team here in the second half. And let me tell you something, you see all these plays here. There's Marco Anthony finishing. Here he's going to make a three-point shot. But watch here. He throws a beautiful pass to Justin Bean, another pass to Brock Miller. Marco Anthony threw that pass inside to Namiya Shkata, too. He was involved in every one of those plays. Marco Anthony really has played one heck of a game. He's the one guy who played really good in the first half. Wooster played well also, but Marco Anthony really doing a lot of things. Utah State, as you saw, already has more field goals in the second half than they did the entire first half. What do you need to see from UNLV, Steve, to kind of get back on track well the first thing they got to do is they got to make more stops in the half court they, they can't keep up firepower wise they did a good job in the first half defending Utah State in the half court not as good especially the perimeter guys in the second half so they got to buckle down on defense and they've got to get Bryce Hamilton Jenkins has been lost the whole game those are the two guys that are gonna have to get it done for them because they don't really have an inside score Anthony No gets his own miss, another offensive rebound. And trying to reset this Utah State offense. And he's going to call a timeout. Yeah, he thought he couldn't dribble again. He thought he was going to double dribble. I'm not so sure about that. Utah State up by 10. You are watching Bracket Week presented by Kubota. Mountain West Conference Tournament quarterfinals. One more to come later tonight as Colorado State takes on Fresno State. Third season for Craig Smith at Utah State. Received a contract extension in February. His team has won four straight entering tonight, and they've won all four of those by an average of 10 points per game. And how about that out of the timeout? They ran the out-of-bounds play again for Justin Bean, and they were able to score. Eight points tonight for Bean. Tillis around the senior Anderson. A little full court pressure now by UNLV. Anderson 
muscles his way for two around Moses Wood. All strength there, great left hand also. Greg Smith was raving about Alfonso Anderson when we spoke with him today, saying he's really just been playing like a senior, like you'd want a senior to play this time of year, not just on the court, but off the court in terms of leadership and communication. Great boxing out there by Bean. Miller for three. And the ball goes out of bounds to the Utah State bench. It'll stay with UNLV. And the rebounding edge now favors Utah State. It was even at the half, but Utah State plus six in the second half. They have out-rebounded every opponent this year. And UNLV did a great job in the first half playing them even, and they didn't have any second chance points in the first half. They now have six in the second half. So it's starting to get away from UNLV a little bit on the glass. Blake. And rebound again to Utah State. It's Bean. They also are one of the best defensive rebounding teams in the country. They don't give up any offensive rebounds. Anthony again. I'll tell you, Anthony and Anderson, so physically strong in terms of finishing around the basket. 15 from Marco. Blake took his eye off but could not corral the pass. Yeah, obviously, this thing is starting to get away from UNLV. I mean, this Anthony is just. John comes to him too late, and he has no problem taking it right to his chest. 11th UNLV turnover, and this is starting to slip away from the Rebels. Largest lead of the night right now for the Aggies. You know, Andrew, we talked about the idea of playing a game yesterday like UNLV did. They came out much more comfortable than Utah State in that first half. But it seems like Utah State has found their legs now. Yeah, and UNLV's running out of gas a little bit. Yeah, their depth is a problem. They really only play eight guys. Wooster called for the foul. But That's the, his third. The one thing you see from UNLV is there's no point guard out there. You know, Jenkins wants to shoot threes. Bryce Hamilton wants to score. That's what they. That's what these guys are. And not having Marvin Coleman has been a huge hit for T.J. Otzelberger and the Rebels this year. Rebels had a long pause because of COVID. 33 days between games from December 5th to January 7th. T.J. Otzelberger tested positive. And then they played 20 games in the next 58 days. And now back-to-back -back nights with games for UNLV, the number seven seed. Miller. What a rebound by Bean, and then it hit the back of the backboard out of bounds. Wait a minute, no, it'll be Utah State ball. It was deflected. In any event, it's a timeout with eight minutes to go. Utah State trying to move on to the semis. College basketball on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Army National Guard. The next greatest generation is now. Well, if you've watched the Mountain West tournament the last couple of years, you know that Craig Smith and our colleague Evan Washburn had a very good relationship. And Craig Smith thought of Evan maybe as a good luck charm. He messed with his hair last year after they won. Now, because of COVID this year, we do not have sideline reporters for the Mountain West tournament, but Evan messed up his own hair on our Zoom with Craig today. Craig Smith couldn't have been happier to see Evan Washburn. <laughs> I mean, we got on with our producer, Jonathan Siegel, and director Andy Goldberg. He, he didn't care about any of us. No. And then Evan surprised all of us and got on, and Craig went crazy. He said he missed him. He thought about him at shoot-around today. I mean, that was a love fest. <laughs> those two, no doubt. Well, whatever it was, it's still working right now for Utah State. So the Evan magic still exists for Craig Smith. 57-41 in favor of the Aggies. 
They are outscoring UNLV 33-17 this half. Hamilton off the mark. John, the putback. Yeah, UNLV just struggling to find something to go to in the half court set. I mean, Hamilton and Jenkins between them, six for 25. That ain't getting it done. Loose ball tracked down by Jenkins. Here's Grell blocked from behind. Guess who? Marco. Wow, that was great defense. Marco Anthony, a member of the Mountain West All Defensive Team. And showing why right there. Kata, quick two. It's another double double for Kata. His seventh in a row. 12 points, 10 boards. Marco Anthony has been involved in like every play in this game almost. He's been really a lot better than his numbers show. He's been better than that. Hamilton for three. Yes. And TJ Otzelberger calls a quick timeout with 6.26 to go. The lead is 13 for the Aggies on CBS Sports Network. Here's a look at the updated bracket in the Mountain West Tournament. And don't forget, coming up 11.30 Eastern time. It's the final quarterfinal of the day. Colorado State, the three seed, taking on number six, Fresno State. The Bulldogs won their opening round game last night against New Mexico. Semis tomorrow on CBS Sports Network. Championship game set for Saturday on CBS. Anthony again, this time he comes up short, but once again gets his own miss. That's like the worst thing that he's done tonight. <laughs> Kata around El Cadia, not this time, and tipped out to Blake. They doubled him in the first half. The second half, they haven't doubled him at all. Delcadia step back is short and Kata with his 11th rebound. 14 double doubles for Kata this year. That leads the Mountain West. Too easy. One won't go, but Kata will go to the line. He got deep position that time. That was a set play. They had to clear it out for him on that side. He's got to finish that one. Steve, only one team has had a three-peat at the Mountain West Tournament. It was New Mexico from 2012 to 2014. Utah State has a chance to join the Lobos in the record books if they could win it again this year. Yeah, Steve Alford had some great teams those years. And Steve Alford not done this year. No. He'll see San Diego State in the semis tomorrow. Well, that guard, Grant Sherfield, the transfer from Wichita State, has been spectacular. Dynamite. Kata is so long. He goes up for a rebound, and his arms are above everybody's by far. Seven feet tall, 245 pounds out of Portugal. Set play, great play. And he's fouled by John. Well, he did a great job of sealing up here, just using his feet. It's really pretty simple what he's doing here. He sets that up with his feet and gets great position where Zhang has to foul. And that is the fourth foul on Mbake Zhang. Okay. 
I mean, Cade has got 15 and 11, and you know, he played okay. He's playing okay. I mean, but that shows you how good he is. Here's a guy who's got 15 points, 16 points, and 11 rebounds, and you're like, eh, he's been all right. Yeah. <laughs> double double in seven straight. Hamilton for three, and the rebound, Wooster. And Craig Smith says, let's slow things down a little bit. Yeah, you certainly don't want to do anything crazy. I'm not saying you want to just hold it, but you don't want to do anything crazy now. Kata to the hoop. And a foul is called. I mean, that's seven feet putting the ball on the ground from the top of the key and getting to the basket. I mean, this kid's really a good ball handler. Pass, dribble, got to become a better 14, 15 foot shooter. Get a little stronger. He's still, he's still got. Physically, he's got to get stronger. Well, you look at the numbers. He is one of only two players since 1992 to average at least 14 and a half points, nine and a half rebounds, three blocks, two and a half assists, and one steal per game. The only other player to do that since 1992, Bo Outlaw. I mean, that's 28 years. Yeah, that's a long time. <laughs> that's a long time. <laughs> And the thing you don't see is you don't see a guy average three blocks and two and a half assists. That's the part of it that's really surprised. And Bakke Chong playing with four fouls, trying to get around Keita, cannot. Great box out by Justin Bean. And a foul committed by Hamilton with 3.57 to go. Utah State in cruise control here in Vegas. Let's see who stepped up their game tonight. Brought to you by Warner Ladder. No surprise here. Marco Anthony. Marco. What a game for Marco Anthony. 15 points and 11 rebounds, and five of those 11 boards were on the offensive glass. And five assists, Andrew. So, I mean, this guy's had some game tonight. Averages 10 points per game, career high 22 against Northern Iowa. But he has been all over the floor for Craig Smith and the Aggies. He's the one guy that was energized in the first half. You know, we were talking about their energy not being great in the first half, whether they were a little nervous playing their first game in the tournament or whatever. But he came out with tremendous energy from the beginning. UNLV trying to deny all over now. Shot clock winding down. It's at five. Wooster all the way for two. The freshman. Tough kid. 8-0 run for the Aggies. Wood in the corner. Knocks it down. Look at this long pass. Don't know how necessary that was by Bean. Totally unnecessary. Greg Smith not happy about it. Hamilton's pass is picked off. And, and Craig Smith keeps saying, pull it back out. Wooster doesn't listen. Counting in one. And now, he, now he's going to get yelled at. Bean's going to get yelled at first for doing that long pass. Now, meanwhile, behind the play, there is a UNLV, UNLV player injured. That's Mbake Jong, who's still down on the floor. Let's take a look at what happened to the UNLV senior. Man, took a bad step and immediately yep. went down, grabbing his left leg. Oh, man. Oh. And he's going to need some help getting over to the UNLV bench. Mm. Not putting any weight on his left leg. The senior from the Senegal, 
member of the Mountain West all defensive team has had a very good career here with the running Rebels one of the captains of this UNLV team with 303 to go in the last game of the season for UNLV that is tough to see you took the words right out of my mouth, my mouth. I hope hopefully the kid is not seriously hurt because to get hurt at this stage it's never good to get hurt period but at this stage as you said three minutes to go in the season This guy has not been able to buy anything. Jenkins one for 11 tonight. You know, give Utah State credit defensively. And one thing about Jenkins, he's a little small, and I think his size has hurt him a little bit this game. They contested every one of his threes hard. Bean left alone. Hamilton's deep three won't go, and we approach two minutes to go. And Booster tied up and fouled. Booster also played high school football back in Montana as a quarterback and a safety, so he's used to taking some hits. I will say this, Andrew. This game here it was a must win for Utah State, but I, this game doesn't get them in. Sure. It keeps them from being out right now because let's face it UNLV it's not considered a great win but it does give them an opportunity and truthfully if I'm them I'm rooting for Colorado State in that next game because they play Colorado State tomorrow and win that game then they'll be pretty safe I think to be in the NCAA tournament if they play Fresno State and win they're gonna have to win the whole thing to get them to get their bid. In some ways, and again, Fresno State, a very capable team. Oh, no doubt. If Colorado State wins the quarterfinal to come here tonight, you almost have a de facto play-in game. Would you agree with that? Utah State, Colorado State tomorrow? The winner would guarantee to be in, but I think if Colorado State loses, they could still they be could still. in, I think. Okay. I think the game would be more for Utah State. I think Colorado State would be safely in, in my opinion. I mean, not safe. It'd be like an 11 seed maybe in the first four but the game would be more Utah State Miller step back three and another offensive rebound for Anthony that's his sixth yeah he's been tracking down everything so Craig Smith who calls timeout just to make a substitution. He's about to go to 7-0 in the Mountain West Tournament as head coach of Utah State. Don't forget, coming up next, the Inside College basketball crew talks all things conference tournaments as they break down matchups, highlights, and projections as Bracket Week continues here on CBS Sports Network. I got to imagine Evan Washburn feels a little bit better that Utah State's going to win without him here. He's not the, they don't need him to win. They proved that tonight. Sean Barstow with the jumper. The final minute to go here. Delcadia and a foul is called. Well, it looks like 70 was the magic number for UNLV this year. When they held their opponents to 70 or fewer, they went 12 and 2. When they allowed 71 points or more, they're going to go to 0 and 13. That's a very telling number. But, you know, this UNLV team, they, they have struggled this year defensively more than anything else. And, have not been able to hold people down. They, they held this Utah State team down big time in their game that they beat them in. Ten points for Del Cadia tonight.
Airsto lays it in. Younger brother of Cam Airsto, who had such a great career at New Mexico. Mountain West Tournament MVP in 2014. Yeah, he was on those three teams yep. that you talked about. Drafted by the Bulls. Sean's older sister played at Utah State as well. No, that's not me. And the Aggies can dribble it out. UNLV was game early, but Utah State took over. And the Aggies are back in the Mountain West Tournament semifinals. 74-53 over UNLV. Update the bracket here in Vegas. And now we know three of the four in the semis. We're about to find out one more coming up next. Colorado State against Fresno State here on CBS Sports Network. Once again, final score, 74-53. For Steve Lapis, our entire crew, I'm Andrew Catalan. We'll be back soon with quarterfinal number four between Fresno State and Colorado State. Now we send you back to our New York studio for Inside College Basketball Bracket Week presented by Kubota.